Hi guys. So today I'm going to show you how I make jewelry out of my leftover acrylic pouring paint skins. And these sell really well and they're a great addition if you're going to do an arts and crafts fair because they're a little more affordable than say an original piece of art, but it's still a kind of a unique piece that people can take home and so they're pretty likely to buy these items. I'm going to be doing another video about my arts and crafts fair setup and how I achieved that pretty inexpensively. So be sure to subscribe if you're interested in learning more about that. Okay, so you're gonna need a couple things to get started. One is these templates that you can buy on Amazon. They come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes and they're called can bouchon templates or bezel templates or pendants and I'll put links in the description below to everything that I'm using here. It also comes with these little glass pieces that we'll glue on top after we put the paint skin down. I have my paint skins. Um, I usually pour over a piece of plastic when I'm doing my art so it makes it really easy once it's dry to just peel these off and use it almost like paper and I store them in um, between, you can kind of see here, wax paper. So um, this lets it, makes it so that you don't, they don't stick together and it's also easy, you can kind of roll it up like I have here and kind of store it a little bit easier. I also have a hack that I use. I bought these paper hole punches off of Amazon, which I'll put in the link below and it matches the circular cutout to the same size as this pendant tray. So that makes this process a lot easier. It makes a very clean circle instead of me trying to cut one out by hand. And I they come in all different sizes, so you can kind of get them that match your uh, the size of your tray. The other thing that we need is glue. I use diamond glaze, and I have used a lot of nightmare glues trying to perfect this process, and diamond glaze is by far my favorite glue to use. It's water soluble, so if you do get some on your hands, it's not really a nightmare to get off, which some of them really are. It takes days in some cases, and it's also easy to spread. You just need a tiny bit, and that achieves what you need and it doesn't really leave extra residue or bubbles or other issues that you might get with some other glues. Okay, so my other trick is I took the bottom, sort of the, the piece that collects the paper, if you were doing, using this as a paper cutter, off of this punch. And I do that because as I'm taking my my paint skin and I wanted, say I wanted a particular detail. It's easier for me to see if I just slide it, whoops, if I can get it in the right way, for me to just slide it in. Let's see, which one do I want here? And I can kind of see exactly how this is gonna punch out, right? So let's see here, I'm gonna do this just to show you. Just press down and there you go, we have one piece cut out. So it's super simple. I'm gonna do just a couple of examples here for you today. There you go. So we have our two cutouts ready to go. So all I'm gonna do is put a tiny bit of glue in the tray, like a teeny bit. That's all I use right there. Put down the skin, it fits perfectly. I just tap it down. You might also use like a Q-tip if you want just to get the corners. What I've done at times is just use the, the, the glue lid so I can kind of make sure to get all those corners down, okay? You just wanna make sure you kind of pat it around. go. Again, if you do get any on your fingers, you can just easily wipe it off and it does wash off pretty easily. You can also wear gloves if you want. I just find that when I do wear gloves, um, the glue sticks to the gloves pretty good. So it makes it a little hard to work with the materials. So I'm going to let this dry for um, probably about four or five hours or so. And then when I come back, we will uh, attach the glass piece. 
All right, so these are nice and dry. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put some glue here, just like we did before. And then we're just gonna push down, put the glass piece on and push down. Now the this piece, I would say, you really need to put some pressure on it to just squeeze out all of those bubbles that pop up or that's just natural part of this. So then I just sort of take my finger around and wipe the extra glue and what have you. If I find there's like really a bubble in there, I just keep pressing and pressing and pressing and hold it down till that glue has a chance to really solidify a little bit. So there you go. See, nice little pendant we have. We'll do the same with this one. All right, looks good. Okay, so see, you can see how that glass really makes that paint pop and all those different colors really shine through a lot better. So now I'm just gonna let those dry. And once they're dry, um, you can put them on, say for example, a little necklace that, uh, chain that I bought off of Amazon. I bought these in bulk uh, for necklaces or if you have an earring template, you can go ahead and uh, attach those to what I've done here is a card. So this is how I would sell them, right? So this is a different template I got off of Amazon. It's kind of a funky feather type of a situation. So I was able to put my branding on the back and they also come with little bags. So you can put bags, uh, you can bag them up and they're easy to sell and hang and display in any way that you want. So the, the options are really endless. There's a lot of really cool templates that you can find. So I'll put a link to some of my favorites so that you can start playing around and getting creative. Now, I did also wanna mention that I started doing something a little differently here where I bought these blanks, their wood blanks off of Amazon. And what I did with these is I actually just dipped them into the wet paint drippings and they came out with some really cool effects, right? You can see how yeah, this one kind of has some cells going on. And they're, they're already drilled so that you can just put a jump ring and an earring hook on there. And you can also lacquer those or um, I'll uh, spray them with a varnish or you can do like a Mod Podge or like a Liquitex gloss. And then those will be ready to sell as well. So as you can see, there are a lot of different ways that you can display your jewelry here. Are just a couple of options that I bought pretty inexpensively off of Amazon. And I was a, first a little leery about starting to make jewelry, but I found that I've really enjoyed this process and getting to use my creativity in a different way. And it also added a really nice product to my art business that people really seem to love. So let me know what you think in the comments or if you have any questions or any additional tips. See you next time.